When life throws you a curveball, how are you going to handle adversity? Welcome to the Fearless Mindset Podcast, where you're about to go on a journey as I interview security, business, and entertainment leaders on what it takes to stay fearless. I'm your host, Mark Ludlow, and enjoy today's episode. Hello, folks. Mark Ludlow here with the Fearless Mindset Podcast, and today I have my new glasses. I'm trying to look cool like Coolio over there in Florida. <laughs> Julio's got the nice suit and the West Palm Beach background back there on the beaches there and the yachts in the background. How you doing, Julio? Yeah, it's pretty warm here, though. So Is it? <laughs> A little too warm. Too warm. Do you go to the beach in the afternoon with like 100 degrees and soak in the sun and jump in the water and get bit by sharks? Or do you do that beach stuff out there? Or is that kind of... Nobody really does yeah, that. I'm, we're obviously near the beach. I just jump in my pool with my German Shepherd and you know, we both <laughs> pull down together. <laughs> nice. Well, folks, I wanted to have Julio come on and just share. I know a lot of the listeners are veteran military folks, but we have a lot of veterans that listen to the show. And Julio is very patriotic about our country. He loves our country. And his thing, he's the expert in taxes and he's the CEO of um I'm trying to remember the name of the company um engineer tax services and Julio you have like several companies that you're you own and run right you're like you're very you're very busy in the tax world we're very t- busy in the tax world we've you know expanded we've made acquisitions all which you know really have some you know uh, opportunities for the veterans which I'm really proud about you know, as you know, Mark, I uh, grew up over in Camp Lejeune yep. in uh, the 60s into early 70s. My mom was a school teacher there. My dad was active. And, um, you know, our, our, our friends from back then in the 60s are still our friends today. Our family still, you know, share Christmas cards. And, you know, it was a wonderful community back then. And, you know, I'm really dedicated to uh, helping all veterans. And, you know, let's talk about some of those ways, because there are some substantial ways that I think a lot of people, you know, just don't know or take advantage of. And I'm glad that you're allowing us this forum to share those thoughts and opportunities. You know what I find, Julio, is the veterans are good at certain things like protecting, you know, they're good at uh whatever their MLS was in the military. Now they're in the corporate world and now they're running businesses and they just don't know what they don't know. And unless you're mentored and coached or have a great accountant like yourself, um, I had to find out the hard way, you know, yeah. and then I hired a good bookkeeper, former CFO, of Goodwill Industries. Like, uh, why are you doing that? Like, I don't know. I've been doing it that way for whatever. Do it this way. But there's so many lessons you can teach the audience, uh, who, um, Julio on what to do, you know, the practices that they should like do. Like, for example, um, you know, the VA benefits for housing. What is your thoughts on using that benefit for flipping houses? I know there's a lot of real uh, guys in real estate that are flippers. What is your thoughts on what's your advice on as we go to higher interest rates in the economy? Who knows where that's going to go? If it's going to continue, we don't know. Well, you know, great question. You know, one thing we know though, is when the interest rates go up, so do the rents, right? Uh, so, so, you know, qu- you know, we usually see that when we're investing in these properties. And I, I got to tell you that, that my dad was blessed to get the GI Bill, right? So, yeah. you know, back then we had the GI Bill paid for his education. And, you know, the first few homes we bought, we used the GI Bill to get those lower interest rates. So, you know, obviously that's a big benefit of getting lower interest rates, putting less money down mm-hmm. and having that GI Bill to help with uh buying and investing in real estate, right? And, you know, I think, Mark, the special thing is, is that when we invest in real estate, it's one of the assets in our country that we get to expense. Now, Mm. let's think about that. If I buy a stock or a bond for $100, Mm. I don't get to write that off. But if I buy an investment property, I get Mm. to expense it, right? Because we get to write off real estate in this country. That's one Mm -hmm. of the investments we get to expense. And not right. only do we get that benefit, so we're already getting a 50% return, right, Mark? Because $100, we're going to write it off for $100. We're yeah. going to get rents, right? And those rents are going to go up with inflation. That is standard. And uh, and then you're always 
you know, long term going to have appreciation. And I don't know that we can say the, the same thing about the stock market right now. And uh, and we certainly don't get to write off our stocks. So, you know, I, that's I, a great I, point the thing that you're bringing up. And, you know, there's still some veterans that are can take advantage of the lower interest rates and lower money down to invest in property based on, you know, whatever GI bill they signed up for. Now, how critical is using that 1031, is that 1030 exchange as far as, so say, moving real estate transactions and stuff? I heard that's a big, big thing that a lot of builders do. Is that pretty effective just to be utilizing that if you're a builder? It is because, Mark, I think it's one of the best ways to accumulate wealth. Now, think about this. We, we go, we develop a property, we sell it for a profit. The 1031 is basically a law that says we can defer the profit if we take that profit mm-hmm. and we put it into another real estate investment. So why mm-hmm. wouldn't you? Because exactly. we're going to take that profit. It's going to be tax-free. We're going to put it in the 1031, mm-hmm. right? And then we're going to get the same benefits and more from that next property. We're going to get to expense mm-hmm. that property and accumulate the wealth. And let's just keep building it up through the 1031 process. I mean, that's how so many real estate investors have built up their fortunes in this country using the expense cost irrigation, right? Mark cost, cost irrigation. Right. That's that's where we can do an engineering report. We do hundreds a month. And wow. So we work for the accounting firms and their clients and you know any of their veterans as well. But so we buy a property, mm-hmm. we do a cost irrigation study that determines how much of that property is personal property, non-structural mm-hmm. versus structural, right? And typically, you know, Mark, it could be 30%, 40%. So let's, let's, I want to do an example real quick. All right. And sure. let's just play like, what would we do? Pay the IRS uh, <laughs> or buy a property. All right. Mm, that's let's an easy one. This. Let's play yeah. this game because I've done this my whole life. So, oh, yeah. all right. I owe $100,000 in taxes, right? The government says, yep. we've done everything we can and we got to write a check for a hundred grand. Right. Now, Mark, I could take that same hundred grand, mm-hmm. hundred thousand. That could be my down payment, right? So that's my twenty percent down on a five hundred thousand dollar property. Now, so I buy that same property. I take that one hundred thousand dollars and forego paying the IRS. Take that same thing. That's my twenty percent down payment. Now mm-hmm. I have a five hundred thousand dollar property. I do a cost segregation, and we determine that thirty percent. Uh, that building is immediately expensed under our current rules. So that $500,000 property, now we're getting $150,000 write-off. We've eliminated the taxes that we owed. Wow. So we just traded a tax liability for an appreciating asset. And if, if I could say anything to your audience, it's like, you gotta, you gotta consider this, right? Because the IRS is saying, we'll reward you for investing in real estate. That's why you get to expense it. We're mm-hmm. even going to give you the tool of cross segregation. That means you can accelerate that write off. And literally, that money you owed the IRS became your down payment. And this $500,000 property, maybe in 10 years, it's paid you a lot of rent. Mm-hmm. It's kept up with inflation. Mm-hmm. And now it's worth, let's say it's worth. Two million, it's gone up four times, right? We right. sell that building for two million. Now we owe a hundred a million five hundred in gain, but we'll 1031. Oh. Right, we'll 1031. Now we don't pay the taxes. We get that next property. We you know mm-hmm. go bigger. And um look, the the government, the IRS allows you to trade tax liabilities for appreciating assets. If we invest in ourselves, if we invest in someone else, we don't get this. If I invest in someone else's stock, I don't get the tax benefit. They do, Mark. Wow. So we've got to change the, the, the thinking. thinking here. We yeah, have absolutely. To invest in ourselves, right? If we set up a pension, we get to write it off. If we put our money in an IRA, we get to write it off. If we put it into a Roth IRA, mm-hmm. we can write it off. We can use that to buy the property. And because we have it in an IRA, you know, we get to defer the gains much like we do at 1031. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. Dang. 
gold nuggets, folks. Listen, get in your notepad, write pen, your, your pen, and take notes from Julio. He's giving you some big NBA gold nuggets here. But what's your what's your um, advice? So let's say I'm just getting out of the military. I want to go real estate, but I'm, I'm watching, you know, uh, let's say I'm watching Grant Cardone, for example, and I'm trying to figure out, do I want to go into real estate, go into a hedge fund, and uh, or do, go buy stocks? Because some school of thought is, you know, don't buy real estate or don't buy stock market right now or invest in the stock market right now because it's too high. And But I think with the interest rates going up, I've always t- been taught equities fall when interest rates go up. Is that true or that is that a fallacy? Well, like I, I think you absolutely have to go into real estate. I think that, you know, you go into a stock market, it's like, you know, going to the casino. You don't know, right? Right? Right. Winners and losers. But whoever you're investing in is getting all the tax benefits. Yeah. And I, I got to tell you, I'm, you know, big, I like what Grant Cardone's doing because yeah. you can invest with Grant and get a tax benefit by investing in him, but you don't necessarily have to come up with all the cash, right? The smart uh, genius. Yeah. Right. He allows people to come in with yeah. how much that he has. And yep. he does the cost segregation on his buildings. He passes that on to the investors. Uh, it's just a brilliant strategy. And he allows everyone that opportunity um, again to be an owner. Right. right. Because sure. We, we buy the stock, there's no there's no tax write-off there. We buy real estate with Grant Cordona, we buy it ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, we get the full tax benefits. Great explanation. I know you've been posting a lot on your uh, LinkedIn. I follow you like every day on LinkedIn. And you're always talking about grants. The grants people aren't taking advantage of. And for our veteran, the business owners that are veterans out there, can you explain to them where are they missing out on on the, the grant piece? I'm so I'm so glad you brought this up because you know we're all paying taxes, and mm-hmm. a lot of those dollars get earmarked for grants. Grants to help what help create jobs here in our country. And a lot of the grants are associated with veteran owned businesses, right? So here's the thing, Mark, the veterans, what I'm told from treasury and from the government is that most veterans have these veteran owned businesses. They don't even apply for the grants. Now this sure. grants are free capital. Mm-hmm. Right? You get the grants, you don't have to pay back anyone. They don't own any of your stock. This is free capital to mm-hmm. help veterans grow and build companies, grow employment in our country, grow employment in their communities. And they've earned the right to those grants for serving our country and doing so very patriotically. And one of those gifts is giving the veterans a special earmark of these mm-hmm. grant dollars associated with their activities. And Mark, if we could do anything today, it's making sure the veterans all veterans that are business owners, mm-hmm. startup businesses are one, yeah. thinking at least about applying for grants, mm-hmm. getting grant eligible, you know, making sure that their business is veteran certified. And doing how do you do that, that, Julio? Yeah, I mean, it's really a simple process. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. basically, you know, showing the government all your veteran, you know, certificates, mm-hmm. military certificates. And getting them to acknowledge that and giving you the certificate that, yes, it's a veteran-owned company. That's that's the one thing I see with the veterans is that Got it. it's a veteran-owned business, mm-hmm. but they just didn't get the certificates. And having that certificate then supercharges the grant process now because now we have the certificate. Now we can go for the grants. You know, now mm. We've got that out of the way, right? And this is an easy right. process to do. But a lot of times, you know, veterans may come to us and looking for grants. The first thing we say is make sure you have your certificate that you're, mm-hmm. you know, that you're certified as a veteran owned company. Easy to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, maybe it takes a couple of months, you know, to go through the process, but get it done. And then that really opens the doors. And, you know, the, you know, reach out to us, reach out to the government, but there's not only federal grants, there's state grants, there's local grants. You know, we want to honor our veterans. And grants are one of the ways we do so. And it's very significant. And, you know, we got to make sure we want to take advantage of it. And I want to share something else. Yeah, please do. You know, that say you're a veteran owned company, you could be any kind of company. Got it. There are significant tax 
credits and incentives for hiring veterans. Okay? Whoa. And most people don't know that. But listen, and if you can find a veteran and hire them and you get a great quality employee, a very loyal employee, mm-hmm. you're also getting the government to chip in on their wages. Why not? These, these tax credits are called work opportunity tax credits. Mm. So it's available to all employers for hiring veterans. And, you know, it's a gift to the employer. But mm. now you're getting that same person at a much lower labor rate because you're getting the credits from the government. And you get that credit back when you file your IRS tax returns. That, that, that's, that, 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 that's how that works. Right. Okay. Yeah, here's something I didn't choose. Go, go ahead, Leo. No, it's just super important. I mean, mm-hmm. if you know, I if companies all knew this, mm-hmm. I think they would make a more effort to mm-hmm. uh, look for veterans and hire veterans because the credit's amazing. Again, we're rewarding mm-hmm. companies for hiring veterans, and we're hiring veterans for going to work and getting into the workforce and being productive and. It's just a great opportunity. I just wanted to make sure that we talk about that because absolutely, here there's a lot of companies out there that would love to hire veterans. And maybe you've already hired veterans. Maybe exactly. you've already done it. And you just mm-hmm. didn't apply for the tax credits. Well, make sure you do because, you know, it's just a refund on your labor costs. Right. Okay. Instead of my end, uh, your side stopped recording as you ran out of storage. Um, <laughs> Have your tech support guys check that out. I just got a uh, a little thing that said, hey, your Julio side ran out of storage on Riverside. I'm like, huh? Oh, sorry okay. about that. Don't know. <laughs> yeah, but we're not recording. You're, we're recording right now. No, 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 but we're not recording on our side, so. Copy that. I got it. Okay. Sounds good. Sorry for that error. It's all right. It's all good. It's a beauty of podcast. Just go with the flow, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, here's the thing that baffles me. I am a veteran-owned company. I'm actually working on the process of becoming certified with the government as a veteran disabled status company. And people tell me, hey, once you get that status, it allows you to become a top player with some of these big companies as a service provider. Is that true? Or is that only strictly for governments? No, that's that's true. And uh, so I'll give you a comparison. So I'm a, okay. minority, I'm a minority certified company. And um, yeah, so there are companies out there, public, private companies and government agencies that give a priority and set aside uh, certain dollar amounts for veteran owned minority owned companies and, you know, so minority and veteran disability companies. Yeah. So those, those are earmarked and the veteran disability association in DC Mm. has a list of all the companies, public, private, and government agencies that give benefits to those certifications and will give priority to uh, contracts. Oh, wow. Okay. That's good to know. I'm in yeah. the process of getting mine actually officially certified. I got to turn it in my tax returns and a bunch of other stuff and then I'll be approved. I think it takes like a few months to get that approval, but I think the tax return, they have to give them the DDT 14 or some other military paperwork right. or something like that. And it's, it's greatly helpful in getting contracts. It is all, absolutely. All sectors and all sectors. All sectors. So Julio, I just want the, I want the audience to know how big of a deal you really are. <laughs> Uh, and <laughs> okay. you have how many companies do you actually own? I mean, you have like, like, I think three that I can count of right now. Yeah, well, let's see. I mean, you know, probably about 10 companies, right? And, um, you know, we have the firm, the tax credit incentive firm. We recently bought the grant firm. We acquired a payroll firm because we wanted to make payroll affordable for all small businesses. Oh, cool. And, and make it more automated because. We see a lot of the payroll companies that are becoming more and more expensive, right? And we're absolutely really helped. So, and it's really tech driven. So we're trying to keep it affordable for all business owners. And then we've bought other firms that help accounting firms with management and marketing and 
Uh, yeah, it's been a great journey. But the journey really is to bring all the tax benefits, incentives, grants down to everyone, small business owners, veterans, minorities, and not just to the Fortune 500 companies, right? We know, listen, mm-hmm. and, and grants, who got, mo- who got the most grants over the last 10 years? Tesla, right? So Interesting, I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, the government, you know, basically gave them the money to be a company and survive. They were ready to close their doors. And then the federal government, California, came in and gave them a bunch of grants. Wow. They opened and the government said, hey, we want to have, we want to create employment with, you know, investing and giving money to Tesla. Well, that's the same for a lot of our companies. It's Mm -hmm. just that, you know, we're not all Teslas. We don't all have the resources, (laughs) right? But that's what we're trying to do is make sure that all of them know about these resources. So did I hear you right? California gave them the grant or is that just a federal grant that they gave Tesla? Is that how that worked? Oh, California and both the federal government gave them significant grants. Jeez. Um, they, they, they wouldn't have survived without it. They would have not made it wow. money in the federal government. Even but, though a publicly traded company, they still got the grant. Wow. That's uh, crazy. Listen, most of the public most of the public companies are the ones getting the grants. Look, no way. Oh, Microsoft, Apple, they're all taking grants, right? But wow. you know, this is the power of conversation. We got to get the words out. These grants are available to all veterans, all small oh. business owners, right? It's, Dude, that's they crazy. Don't apply, they don't apply. They don't take advantage of these tax incentives. I think the audience just doesn't know what they don't know. Yeah, and that's why that are, that's our mission, to make sure that people like you that help with your platform to let them know. I mean, that's the real miracle and the power of a community. And then clearly you're also passionate about the sports world and the athletes out there. And you guide, you have your, you have some partnerships with some big names that are out there and help them guide them as athletes in the professional world. Have you enjoyed doing that? That's kind of like a hobby for you. Well, it's not a hobby. I mean, we, um, you know, that really, that, that is run by Ray Lewis, you know, hall of famer. Oh yeah. Ray. Yeah. NFL player with the Ravens. And, um, you know, the one thing about Ray is his passion to give back to the communities. But mm-hmm. what he realized is that if he's giving all his money to the government mm-hmm. through taxes and not tax planning, then he's not able to give back to his communities. And so, you know, we, we help him and athletes, you know, be more charitable, but take advantage of the tax benefits associated with being charitable and, uh, and giving back to their communities. That's so cool. I, I know uh, they always say the NFL stands, stands for not for long. I mean, you might go a few seasons and make your millions of dollars, then you're injured, and then you're done. It's just, it's just a tough sport to compete at, at the highest level. You know, I think about it like it's so crazy. At 20 years old, you're making all this money. You've come from a poor community. Like, you know, I just mm-hmm. can't imagine, you know, that metamorphosis. And then, you know, a few years later, it's over. And so right. you got to grow up real fast. Yeah. You're in the public guy. And then, like, in a blink of the eye, it's over. Um, so, like, we, we all have to preserve our capital. I, like, I always think whether it's the athlete, the veteran, mm-hmm. the minority business, small business owner, you're going to do better that with the cash than the government. Absolutely. We're more, we're better stewards of our money than the government. I mean, look at all the money they're spending right now and whatever they're spending it on. It's like, you don't know what to believe with misinformation. You just don't know what to believe anymore. Well, we certainly know that there's no small business that could survive having that kind of debt, right? So. Absolutely. So true. We got to keep it. So true. Now let's go, let's talk about, um, we're, you know, the big talk right now is going to the presidential election cycle and everybody's saying as the interest rates keep going up, we're going into recession. And what is your thoughts on recession, depression? Uh, you know, we are, we're in what a trillion dollars in debt. What does that look like to you being the expert in money? Well, like, why do we keep raising the interest rates on small business owners? Oh, it's good so, point. It's, it's so tragic. I mean, you know, we have a lot of small businesses that 
when got government loans during the PPP area and, you know, SBA and those rates were uh, variable interest rates. And, you know, I have a client that, you know, a $3,000 a month payment now has turned into 11000 because of the increased interest rates. Ouch. And why, why are we raising interest rates on small business owners that are dealing with inflation, doing, dealing with higher labor rates, wages, mm-hmm. and things of that nature? And, um, you know, it's, it's awfully tough. I mean, we can't increase our prices as much as we're taking on the labor expense and, you know, and all these other inflationary costs. So, you know, I would say that, you know, the one thing we can do to help them is we can help them with grants. We can help them with work opportunity, tax credits, other credits, other tax incentives to help save a little bit more money to keep those doors open. You know, I, I love the stories of all our clients that, you know, we save them a little bit of money and that just allows them to pay mm-hmm. off a credit card, hire another employee, buy some equipment, keep the doors open. And, uh, yeah, we have to get through this together. What is your biggest advice to the CFOs out there that are running like Fortune 100 to Fortune 500 companies that are trying to figure out what the balance sheets are going to do? Because I know there's a big push this fourth quarter going into just to make to make some money for the companies. And and I, I think there's probably a lot of stress right now going to the presidential cycle and all that. What is your advice to those folks? I think more than ever, you got to retain cash. And, uh, okay. You know, I, I think it's vital to have cash. You know, we've got to invest in ourselves that it starts with savings, Saving. having savings and having some type of um, cash balances to get through this inflationary period and get through the presidential cycle and get to the other side of it and hopefully be better from it. 